talked to a man who we first had a chat with on The Breakfast Show uh, nine years ago. He was, uh, he was fighting to get back into work, frankly. Uh, Richard Shakespeare from Sinfin at the time had been out of work for 11 months after he lost his job and decided to set up his own business, teaching diversity to businesses. This is us back then. When I sat down and calculated that I'd done 1,923 applications and attended every interview and, mm-hmm. and got good feedback... But yeah, it did sort of come to a point where I thought, this is getting to a point where I need to do something different. Um, and that's when I decided to work for myself. So what kind of jobs were you applying for? And, and what kind of efforts were you making to, to do this? Was it just writing letters, applications? A lot of it was speculative letters, going to their premises and you know standing in reception saying, I brought my CV. You're a man with cerebral palsy. Do you think that was a factor? I mean, let's not mince around it. Do you think there was any discrimination going on at all? Um, I I obviously went to an awful lot of companies. I think some dealt with the you know the issues that that raises very well, and some you know obviously perhaps could have done with a little bit more training and a little bit more development. And to some extent, I think that's probably where my idea came from. And how's business going? Uh, it's going quite well at the moment. Um, it, it's obviously with all new businesses, it's those first sort of four or five months that are crucial. But certainly, I've been um, very pleased with the response so far. Well. Fast forward nine years, uh, his business, Workplace Diversity Solutions, has just won a big prize. The uh, Natural Entrepreneurship Award for Diversity and Inclusion. Hi, Richard. Good morning, Ian. How are you? Lovely to talk to you again. I'm good, yeah. Uh, Congratulations. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to start where we started last time, actually. How's business? It's all right now. Um, I, I work with um, the likes of Eurostar and Scottish and Southern Electricity Networks and the NHS. Um, and I think since we last spoke, I've now trained 43,000 people, um, primarily because I've just developed an e-learning solution um, so that that's scalable for large businesses that are obviously looking to do something around diversity and inclusion and inclusive leadership. So, uh, yeah, it's going quite well at the minute, thank you. It sounds like 43,000 people, just about as as blue chip as clients can go from that list. How does it feel to win an award? Um, I didn't expect to win it, to be honest. I was up against um, some big organisations. I was up against Barclays, for example. Um, So I think the sort of cynic in me thought, well, I I probably won't win, but... um, to find out that all of the nine judges voted for me uh, unanimously was quite impressive. You're doing something very right, clearly. I mean, have you seen a change in attitudes? I mean, presumably you'd like to think you've played a part in that, but a change in attitudes between, between then and now? Yeah, I think there's still a long way to go. I mean, obviously, when I launched the business, um, originally we just had the introduction of the Equality Act. So that was sort of changing the face of legislation and the way that people sort of dealt with it. But I think really it's still um, a bit of an issue to tackle in terms of leadership. So for me, to add intrinsic value and to drive change within businesses, it needs to be something that's led from leadership level and and not just sort of frontline staff. Um, And so, I mean, that's one of the reasons that recently that I've launched the Diverse Life podcast so that, you know, each week I can put out some thoughts and some different ways of looking at diversity and inclusion to really help people sort of embrace it and actually not just look at it from a a compliance point of view, but to see that there's a real strong business and competitive advantage to embracing it correctly. I said earlier, everyone's got a podcast now. I want a podcast. What's yours? Diverse Life. A Diverse Life, yes. You can get it on Apple Podcasts. You can get it on the Workplace Diversity Solutions website. All the normal places. (laughs) And, I mean, it would be easy to say, I suppose, look, nine years on, look at you, look what you've achieved, you've got a big prize, all these clients, you've never looked back. Is that Would that be true, or do you remember actually being quite daunted by what you decided to take the plunge and do? I think for anybody that um, you know decides to start a business or finds themselves in that position, it's not easy. Um, you know, it's a very, very difficult thing to do. And, and there's a lot of ups and downs. You know, the ups can be when you do have you know, those large international clients that are buying your e-learning solutions or you're collaborating with other companies and things like that. But actually, the thing that I sort of always go back to is that initial feeling that I had trying to find work. And I think also you have to be grateful, you know, for example, with this award, it's because I was nominated by Steve Megson and the team at Quiet Storm Solutions. Um, you know, so actually because of their support and people like Ken Roy Consulting and the people there that have helped me, it, you have to hold on to those relationships and, and actually just hold on to the belief that you can do this, but it's going to be a tough road. 
Anyone who's in the position you were in back then, out of work for months and months, I mean, would you recommend doing something like this, setting up your own venture? Yeah, I think you, you have to, you've got to hold your nerve. Um, particularly, you know, at the moment we're in fairly uncertain political and, and sort of financial circumstances again. I think there's a lot of parallels um, between when we spoke in 2010 and where we are now. I think, you, yes, you can do it, but my advice would be that if you have a dream for a business or something you want to set up, but you're in employment or you've got the security of a job, try and hold on to that job while you build up the business and only really take the leap um, when it's sort of you know, financially viable and you've got the option. I mean, obviously, in my circumstances, that wasn't an option. Um, but I, I think definitely, you know, whenever people contact me and say, look, how did you do it? I'm looking to do a similar thing. What would your advice be? It is, if you're in full-time employment, hold on to that employment until you can get your business or your concept up and running because, you know, you've, you've got mortgages to pay and families to support and, and so on. It's, it's definitely not easy. Well, good to catch up with you again. Congratulations once more. Brilliant. Thank you. Richard Shakespeare from Sinfin, his business, Workplace Diversity Solutions, just won the Natural Entrepreneurship Award for Diversity and Inclusion. Uh, your weather this morning comes from Alex Hamilton. Hello.